Hello and welcome to the Modern Apps Ninja program. In this short video, we will review how to enroll in a course. Now, before you enroll in a course, you will need to register for the community. So first thing, please ensure that you've registered for the community. You can go to Modern Apps Ninja and you can click on this register and now link here, which provide detailed instructions on how to complete registering for the community. And once that process is complete, you're free to go ahead and enroll in a course. You can find on your courses link or on the, the homepage. Um, we're going to use the vSphere with Tanzu 101 course as an example. So we'll go ahead and click on through to get to the course. Once we get to the course, we can click into the introduction section here. And uh, there's a page for community membership and course registration. Um, I do definitely recommend going through the page and, and learning about how the process works. Um, you know, we, we, uh, you're learning about GitHub and version control systems, very, very important part of whether you're coming from a developer side, DevOps, traditional IT operations, if you're, um, if you've traditionally, if you're even things like infrastructure as code, there's just such a tremendous advantage, uh, for, for those type of initiatives to use, uh, to use, uh, um, GitHub or similar version control systems. And as, uh, IT community transitions their skill sets, I mean, this is really getting to be a, a critical skill that you know, if, if you don't if you're not using it currently in your role there's a very good chance in the near future your existing role may start to use um, these types of, of constructs as well as if you're trying to get into DevOps and cloud native application development very very critically important skill so we're going to use some some um, common uh, uh, getting started github stuff to, to, to teach you how to to participate in github communities and in version control systems uh, as as you enroll and take courses. So uh, we'll see here this option to go ahead and click and open a tab to the registration document. And what we're gonna do is we're going to submit our document to this GitHub repository. And that's gonna trigger an automated workflow. And in the process, we're gonna learn how to submit a document to a public GitHub repository. So this is the same as if you're working on a, on a team project, uh, maybe to a, a open source project if you wanna submit something. As this general process is the same uh, regardless. And so we're gonna look at a very basic, you know, getting started approach to how to, how to add files uh, and that'll get us registered for this course. So we'll go ahead and cre create new file. And it's going to say um, to go ahead and uh, use our GitHub username as the name of your file. So I'll put a name of my file here. Right? And if I'm not sure what my GitHub username is, notice I can um, see it right here. And I actually did a dry run of this before, so I can, I've already got it kind of in my history there. And I can see my GitHub username followed by .yml for YAML. And that's important and won't process if you don't put the file extension. And we can go ahead and type in status in progress. And this is exactly what it explains to do in that registration document if you need to look at it for reference. Next thing we're going to do is just click propose new file. And I'm going to run through this quickly rather than explaining it. And afterwards, I'll, I'll take a brief second to explain what happened here. So we're going to click, we click the propose new button. Now we're going to click the create pull request. And we're going to click create pull request again. And now that's done. We just created a pull request. Now, if you're new to GitHub, you may not know what a pull request is, and it certainly sounds very complicated. So the first thing I want you to understand is that we went to the page where you wanted to add a file. We clicked add file. And for that point, we just click, click, click. And we're done creating our pull request. And notice there's a, um, we, after we submitted our pull request, what's happening right now on the screen, you see some things changing, our, that automated registration setup is happening right now. So if we just sit and wait, we'll see that finish. Um, but uh, when we first clicked that proposed file button, it actually created a copy of the file that we wanted to submit because we're submitting it to a public repository. And so in general, like you think, if I could go to some open source project and just post files, that wouldn't be very secure. Right. What I can do instead, the way Git works, is I can submit a file so that way an admin for that repository can then accept that file or pull that file um, from the, the request that I have for them. So that's why it's called a pull request. And so just those clicking of the buttons that we just did there, very simple click through, GitHub went and created a copy of our source file, uh, that we were the file we were submitting um, on our own personal repository, and it used the copy of that that it saved on our personal repository to submit it as a suggestion to the Modern Apps Ninja community, so that way a course admin could approve it. And once it's submitted, I have an automated workflow just waiting for these type of files to come in that saw that, that you submitted the, the, the pull request, and it checked out your file, 
and then it went ahead and it, and it approved everything and, and completed um, completed the course registration process for you. And we can see that the uh, uh, the pull request was uh, successfully merged and closed. And so uh, good practice here to delete the branch is when you submitted your file, it created a little shadow copy that's just in like a temporary copy of it in case, what if, what if instead of accepting the file, I said, go back and change something or deny it. You may want to have a copy of that. So it created the shadow copy. But since the, your, your request to add that file was accepted, um, then we can be, feel free to go ahead and delete this branch because we know that the, what we just submitted is now part of the main repository and we can delete our little um, temporary copy. And so that's it. We have now fully registered for the course. And if you go to your, uh, you can see here, it provides a link to your member profile page. If you go to your member profile page, here I have it. Um, let me go back to my member profile homepage. Right, and we can see that we have the uh, course for vSphere Wutanzu 101 now showing up under my courses. And um, once this course is done, it'll actually, the workflow will move it automatically to the certificates. But in the meantime, when you're, while you're registered, until you've completed, you can go to your course page and you can click into view the, your, the course here on your, your personal page to see the progress that you're at. And so every time you take a test, there's three tests in the vSphere Wutanzu 101 course. Um, for example, every time you take one of those tests and submit it, the automated workflow will post those records from that test to this page. And again, once you've finished the certificate of completion, uh, it'll go. The automated workflow will go ahead and and put this. It'll move this page over to the certificate section, and it'll make sure that has that the links and the information about how to find your um, certificate and digital badge for the course. So that is course enrollment. Thank you very much for your interest.